The disease wipes out 90% of young Americans and turns the survivors into mutants, who must fight to overthrow the government that is now trying to capture them. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2018 movie, The Darkest Minds. The highly contagious disease has decimated young people in every city in the United States, causing great concern for parents who are watching their children perish without being able to do anything about it. For some mysterious reason, this disease does not affect the adult population. On the other hand, a month after the outbreak began, 90% of the country's young people were eliminated. Suddenly, the young survivors began to show one of the strange side effects and the president's son as one of them. The man reveals that his son's condition has improved since he started the treatment developed by the CDC. In an interview, Gray implores families who have been lucky enough to have their children alive to hand them over to the government so that they can receive the necessary care. Ruby is part of the lucky group of young people who have not been affected by the disease and tries to console her parents, who are worried about her all the time. One night, while they were asleep, the girl lay down on the bed next to her mother. However, when she holds her hand, something in the girl's body activates and Ruby gets up frightened. The next morning, when her daughter shows up, Molly doesn't recognize her and thinks she's a lost child who has broken into her house. Frightened, the woman takes Ruby to the garage and locks her in. Hours later, two government agents show up and take the girl to the CDC along with dozens of other children. When they arrive at the base, the young people are treated like prisoners and, when one young man tries to escape, he is brutally attacked. Furious, the young man looks at the woman who knocked him down and, through his powers, makes her take her own life. At that moment, two other guards appear and attack the young man while the other children are sent to the color processing ward. Talking to the doctor who treated her, Ruby discovers that she is part of a group of children who survived the disease and, like all the other survivors, suffered changes to their DNA. The doctor says that in this treatment center, all the children are divided into five color categories that correspond to the side effects they have. At the bottom of the pyramid are the green children who have advanced intelligence. Most young people acquired this side effect after the disease. Then come the blue ones, who have telekinetic abilities, while the gold ones manipulate electricity. These three groups are considered harmless, but at the top of the pyramid are the most dangerous children. The red ones manipulate fire and the orange ones can control people's minds. Luckily, they are extremely rare. However, after the diagnosis, Dr. Viceroy discovers that Ruby is an orange and is about to give her a lethal injection. Realizing she is in danger, the girl tries to escape, but is soon captured and uses her gift to alter the doctor's mind, making him believe she belongs to the green group. So the girl is sent to the camps where all the children are grouped by color. However, the colors red and orange are not present, as all the young people in these groups, except her, were eliminated shortly after diagnosis. Six years later, Ruby and her classmates have reached adolescence and are forced to carry out tasks to develop their skills. While doing some work to improve her intellect, Ruby is reprimanded by the guard, who realizes that she has lower intelligence than her colleagues in the green group. Seeing the young woman being treated aggressively, another girl decided to interfere and ended up insulting the guard. She is then taken away to suffer punishment while Ruby is forced to undergo a frequency test that only affects young people who have had their DNA modified. When she is subjected to this test, the girl faints and wakes up handcuffed in the infirmary next to Kate. Before leaving, the doctor hands Ruby a note and informs her that the soldiers have already discovered that she is orange and intend to eliminate her soon. In order to survive, the girl must find Kate in the boilers. Minutes later, the two meet and the doctor helps the young woman escape. When they are about to cross the gate, one of the soldiers recognizes the fugitive, but Ruby uses her powers to force him to let them pass. In the morning, when she wakes up, the girl is thrilled to see the world outside for the first time in several years and discovers that, since the infection spread, couples have no longer been able to have children. At that moment, Ruby asks where they are going and Kate promises that she will take her to a safe place. The woman works for the Children's League and helps to free young people who are imprisoned in government camps. On the way there, Kate hands Ruby a necklace and informs her that if she is in danger, all she has to do is press the pendant to activate the tracker. The woman will then be able to locate her. When she reaches a certain point on the road, the doctor meets her boyfriend and celebrates with him the fact that she has succeeded in yet another rescue. After introducing himself, Rob hands the girl a backpack so that she can change in the bathroom of an abandoned gas station and, touching his hand, Ruby sees him capturing a group of children. Immediately, she realizes that the couple are not as nice as they seem and begins to think of a way to escape. After changing her clothes, Ruby meets a girl inside the station and soon discovers that she can control electricity. Scared, Zhu finds a distraction and runs to a van, but Ruby runs after her and convinces the girl to help her escape, because Rob and Kate are looking for her. 
Soon after, Liam and Charles show up and, on seeing the couple, run away scared, as they know that adults can't be trusted. When they are a long way from the gas station, the young men discover that there is another person in the van and Ruby introduces herself. On discovering that she was about to be taken by the Children's League, Liam decides to help her escape, but Charles is resistant to the idea of accepting a new member of the team. Just then, Lady Jane, a woman who hunts young people for money, appears and starts chasing them. However, Kate and Rob manage to catch up with them and attack the woman's car. When he realizes that the adults won't give up chasing them, Liam hands the wheel over to Ruby and uses his powers of telekinesis to destroy the road, causing an accident that forces the vehicles to stop. Hours later, the group decides to stop and Ruby says she's going home. Worried about the girl, Liam says she'll be easily captured if she hitchhikes on the road and invites her to accompany them to the East River. Rumor has it that there's a safe compound of escaped children living there and the guy who runs it is known as the Fugitive. Nobody knows who he is, but he became known by this name for being an orange who escaped from prison four times. Realizing that this is her best chance of survival, Ruby decides to join the team and accompany them on their journey. Along the way, she discovers that Liam was also recruited into the League, but decided to leave when he discovered that they train young people to be soldiers and fight against the government. That night, the group gathers in a room to rest and, in their sleep, Zoo and Ruby accidentally bump into each other. Ruby then has access to one of the girl's memories and is able to see the day she escaped from the camp where she was being held during a rebellion led by Liam. Suddenly, they both wake up and Liam comforts Zoo as he realizes that she has just had a bad dream. The next morning, Liam and Ruby begin to bond and the young man is delighted to see the new member of his team wearing a dress that Zoo has made for her. Suddenly, two bounty hunters appear, but through her powers Ruby manages to convince them to leave without causing any problems. This time, the girl didn't even have to touch them to control their minds and Liam couldn't understand what had happened, because from the beginning Ruby had always presented herself as green. That afternoon, in the middle of the road, the group comes across a shopping mall and decides to go shopping. After gathering some supplies, Ruby and Liam find a sign written on the ground and are suddenly attacked by a group of blues. The youngsters use their telekinesis to scare off the intruders, but Zoo appears and attacks them with electricity. At this point, the youngsters realize that they are dealing with other children and take off their masks. They apologize for the attack, as they thought they were dealing with bounty hunters. Realizing his mistake, Carson invites them to spend the night at the mall and tells them that he and his friends work for the fugitive. Excited, Liam asks for the location of the camp, but Carson says that there is a rule that forbids him from revealing this information in order to keep the children safe. So, once again, Ruby uses her powers and convinces him to give her a hint on how to find this place. The young man then pronounces the letters EDO and Charles, the clever one of the group, spends the whole night trying to unravel this clue. After a few hours, the young man comes to the conclusion that these letters represent the numbers of a radio frequency. By tuning into the right frequency, Charles and Ruby hear a message with the address of the campsite they are looking for. The next morning, they set off on a journey to Lake Prince, which, coincidentally, is close to Ruby's parents' house. So the girl decides to return to her family and says goodbye to the friends she made during the trip. For six years, all Ruby wanted was to see her parents again, but when she looked at the window of her old house, she realized that she would never be able to go back, because the couple didn't even remember that they had a daughter. In tears, she leaves, but Liam goes after her and, after calming her down, takes Ruby back to the van. When they get there, the pair are surprised by Lady Jane, who uses a sound frequency to immobilize them. The woman then handcuffs Liam, but when she approaches Ruby, the girl forces her to put down her gun and then walk through the forest for the rest of her life, until she perishes of hunger and exhaustion. Now that her friends know she's from the Orange Group, Ruby apologizes for lying and reveals that she's still not able to fully control her abilities. At this point, the kids reveal that they're not upset that Ruby hid her powers, because they can only imagine how much persecution she must have suffered because of it. After sorting themselves out and clearing up any misunderstandings, the quartet say goodbye to their van and continue on their way on foot, as they need to cross the forest to reach the shelter. After a few hours of walking, they are intercepted by armed soldiers who are about to eliminate them. Luckily, however, one of the guards recognizes Liam and orders everyone else to put down their weapons. Thanks to Liam, Mike managed to escape from the government prison and, as a thank you, he guides the young man and his friends to the shelter. When they are introduced to the fugitive, they are surprised to discover that Clancy Gray, the president's son, is in charge of the place. Curiously, Clancy has heard of each of them and reveals that Ruby is the only living orange apart from him. The young man then welcomes the new refugees and says that there will be a party that night to celebrate their arrival. During the celebration, 
Liam asks Ruby to dance and, for the first time, they hug. The next morning, the girl goes to visit Clancy and he tells her that his father has allowed him to be made a guinea pig for scientists to carry out tests on him in an attempt to find a cure. However, after several experiments, the doctors gave up on finding a remedy for the disease and Clancy was released. Outraged, he ran away from home and founded the shelter in order to train the children to fight against the government and free all the young people who are still being held captive. Since he has a greater command of his powers, he teaches Ruby how to control her abilities and shows her how she can use them to control people without having to touch them. During one of the lessons, the girl recounts how, as a child, she accidentally erased her existence from her parents' minds and Clancy is impressed by the girl's gift, as he is unable to do this himself. So the young man asks for permission to enter Ruby's memories and find out how she did it. That way, he can help her undo this mistake and return the memories to her parents. At that moment, the young woman loses consciousness and, when she wakes up, she finds Clancy trying to kiss her. She immediately strikes him and runs off into the woods, where she finds Liam. When he sees Ruby crying, he gets worried and asks what happened, but the young woman is ashamed and says she wants to be alone. However, she accidentally transfers her memories to Liam and the young man grabs his gun to go after Clancy. To prevent him from being hurt, Ruby says she wants to leave and the couple go after Zoo and Charles before leaving. Just as they are about to flee the shelter, the commander of the camp where Ruby used to live appears in the company of dozens of armed soldiers. Liam quickly attacks him, but soon loses consciousness as Clancy appears and uses his powers to put him into a vegetative state. At this point, Charles discovers that the man is working with the government and is the real villain behind it all. Through his powers, Clancy has entered his father's mind and controls him to make decisions that he thinks are right. As he is the president's son, the young man has managed to take the whole country into his own hands and is trying to convince Ruby to join him in taking over the world. Furious at being rejected, Clancy decides to make her suffer and attacks Liam while he is immobilized. He then orders the commander to continue attacking the young man while he erases Ruby's memory. However, now that she knows how to control her powers, the girl manages to intervene and makes the commander take his own life. Zhu then turns off the lights and uses the electric currents to eliminate the other soldiers. Meanwhile, Charles helps Liam to his feet and the group flees. Just as they are about to reach the forest, some helicopters approach and new soldiers appear accompanied by red children. All this time, the government has been using these young people who can manipulate fire as a weapon to attack their enemies. That day, the camp is engulfed in flames and the children's trust in Clancy is completely destroyed. On the young man's orders, the red children attack Ruby and her friends, but Liam manages to fend them off and throws a container at his adversaries. Seeing her opponent approaching, the girl orders her friends to run as far away as possible and goes to confront Clancy. At that moment, she uses her powers to control the soldiers and make them point their guns at the young man. However, he manages to take control of the soldiers' minds and mercilessly forces them to shoot each other. He then tries to invade Ruby's mind in order to erase the sad memories, as he believes that this will allow them to start again from scratch. However, before her thoughts could be manipulated, Ruby saw another helicopter approaching and brought it down on top of Clancy. At this point, she runs away, but ends up being knocked down during the impact and, shortly afterwards, an explosion occurs. Before the girl was hit by the fire, Charles appeared to rescue her and they both escaped through the forest, but the young man ended up being seriously injured. Determined to save her friend's life, Ruby takes the pendant she won from Kate and activates the locator so that the League can track her. Minutes later, Liam appears and the young woman reveals that she has called the League for help. As the young man has run away, Ruby knows he won't be accepted back and asks her friend to run away. However, Liam refuses to abandon them and decides to stay, even though he knows he will be taken back to the terrible place he escaped from. Later, Kate and Rob show up and the youngsters are taken to headquarters. When she wakes up, Ruby discovers that Charles is being treated in hospital and Liam has been arrested. So the girl negotiates the young man's freedom and says that if Kate lets him go, she will join the League and fight alongside them. At this point, the woman says that if Liam loves Ruby as much as she loves him, he will never leave that place without her accompanying him. So, in order to resolve this issue, Ruby has to make the most difficult decision of her life. With Kate's consent, the girl goes to visit him and hugs him one last time. As they talk, Ruby can't stop crying and asks Liam to close his eyes. At that moment, she kisses him and, at the same time, uses her powers to erase her existence from his mind. All Liam's memories of her, from the day he met her, are changed so that he never remembers the only girl he ever fell in love with. When the young man opens his eyes, Kate enters the room with a backpack full of groceries, money and a new identity so that Liam can leave. Seeing the young man she loves leave, Ruby feels her heart breaking, 
but she knows it was the best decision, because the last thing she wanted was for him to have an unhappy life just to stay by her side. On that day, Ruby gave up her future so that Liam could be free and became the leader of all the children in the League, promising that together they would overthrow the corrupt government that wanted to imprison them. What she doesn't realize is that Clancy is still alive and now leads an even larger army to get his revenge. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.